What's up, everybody? Spare with a gun here from Sleepless Nights with another episode on Space Engineers. We're doing another update. Um, the audio for this is actually post uh, recording. Somehow I managed to record the entire episode without ever looking to see if Fraps was recording my microphone, which it was not. So, um, also, if any of you notice that I sound a little weird or funny or anything of that nature, um, is basically because I just got Invisaligns put on to straighten up my teeth a little bit. Uh, so that's why uh, I might enunciate things a little weird or something for a little bit. Um, so anyways, this is an update episode. Um, I know I missed um, the last one because I was still uploading footage from my live stream. Um, so this one is kind of a because neither neither update was really that big um, on their own per se, uh, so this is kind of like a, a group update, if that makes sense. Um, this is the grinder, which is the new component that was in the last update for the large ships. Um, it kind of functions. I was originally thinking it was the driller type thing or the driller equivalent. Um, but it actually functions more like the hand grinder that you, as the astronaut, use. Um, and uh, so you can go in and turn turn it on. And you can hear the same... It's got the same kind of grindy sound effect. Um, and this was... I decided to try and test it to see... Um, what it does. Now, I don't know if this is because I was doing it wrong or not, um, but this didn't actually end up like doing anything. It dismantles the ship, uh, but I couldn't find any of the components anywhere, so I don't really know why it was not taking the components, basically. Why it was only um, just dismantling the ship or breaking it or whatever without actually giving the components or the parts back. Um, that was a bit odd, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not really sure how that works. Um, and I never could get it to, to spit out parts no matter what I tried. Um, this was me kind of derping around trying to figure out what was going on. Again, this might have made a little bit more sense had you heard the original audio, but I couldn't actually... Uh, I don't I don't know why I didn't check that, because I recorded uh, cla uh, Crash Logs last night, and I record that differently than I do my regular Let's Plays to get a better sound quality. Uh, but yeah, I, I just didn't even think to when I booted Fraps back up to check and make sure it was recording my mic. So, that's my bad. Uh, what I'm doing here is setting up a test demo for the, the new rotor mechanics. Um, it's not a big deal, but basically they added a, um, a reverse function, which is pretty handy. And the lights are going to demo the new grouping function. And let's see, what else did I end up adding? Yeah, here's where I realized that I needed to add landing gears because they added a few new mechanics to the landing gears as well. Get done. You're done. Just put the landing gears down. <laughs> I don't remember why I was derping, around, derping about. Um... So basically, one of the big features of this current update that, that happened today um, is grouping. You can now hit shift, like I'm about to do here. Maybe? No? Oh, I couldn't figure out why there were so many landing gears. It's because of that pat. Now I'm going to shift click. There you go. Um, so you can shift click now to select things. You can control click to select individuals, um, which is really neat. Um, obviously, 
a lot of you have probably wanted that for a long time, I know I have. And then you can do grouping here on the right, you type in the name of the group and you click save, and then it'll make a group with two asterisks on the both sides to symbolize a group. Um, and so that way you can like unselect and then select the group and it'll select all of those again so you only have to do one click. But um, I'm doing a bad job of showcasing it here because I was still trying to figure out exactly how it worked. But essentially the lock unlock is the equivalent of hitting P on the keyboard. Um, yeah, just don't, don't mind that. I'm, I'm can't figure that out. Uh, but then when you hit off, it locks the gear to where you can't change its state. So that's me hitting the P key. And obviously the one holding the block is not doing anything. So essentially what's what it's doing is it allows you to, you know, um, it makes me think of like the mining carriage in my survival world where it's got landing gears on the front for you to grab other ships, um, but also, I don't know if that one has it or not, but if you had landing gears to land, you can now separate them into two different groups and then turn them on, turn them off, lock their state to where you can hit the P key for landing and not lo lose whatever, you know, you might be holding with the, with the carriage. Um, this is more of a showcasing of the group mechanics than anything else, so I put three and five in the group, and then add two and four by then just going back and, and saving it again. As long as it has the same name, it will save over whatever the previous um, selection was with the new selection and replace that in the group. Um, and you can also work the same way. You can unselect things and resave them and then it will be... that will be the new selection. Um, and then I'm showing that you can have two different groups of like lights and things of that nature and you can have two different colors and you can turn them on and off separately and things of that uh, idea things of that idea don't don't mind me I'm having an off day today <laughs> Dennis screwed me up today leave me alone and then I did one for all and shows that you can um, you can add uh, things to a group type of deal. Uh, what else? What else? Oh, this is where I showed you can select a group, change the color, and it will change it for um, the selections within the group. Uh, pretty simple, but very useful. And then you can use the all group to turn them all off. So you can have um, items that are in more than one group. Um, like that, you could have an on-off group and then like a color color changing group. Um, I think I was explaining that here. I don't know why I'm just looking at random things. <laughs> it's always funny to go back and look at the um, look at yourself play something when you were talking and not hear what you were saying, so you have no idea why you're doing what you did. Um, here, I'm just setting up a basic. Uh, one rotor go one direction, one go another to show the new reverse feature. Um, as you can see, they're spinning against each other. Um, and it's important to note, one of the things I really like about this feature is you get a perfect mirror of the previous speed. So if, if the, the speed of your rotation is important, uh, you don't have to use the slide bar anymore to try and get to the positive or nev negative equivalent of your exact speed, you can just click the reverse button and it'll just flip it to whatever it was, but the, um, you know, the opposite polarity kind of thing. Uh, I think that'll be very useful, especially for mechanics like doors. Um, you know, you could use it to open the door and then hit reverse and it'll close it. You don't have to tweak the slider anymore. Um, I'm, I'm excited about that and the grouping mechanic. Um, I think what I was going to do here was work with the grinder a bit more and see if we could figure out why it wasn't yielding parts. What am I doing? I don't know what I'm doing. I think I'm explaining probably something I've already talked about now. <laughs> uh, maybe. Yeah. 
Oh, and I think I was talking about the landing gears, that I think it's really neat that, um, you know, you could use one group of landing gears to clamp down one group for landing, and you can separate them by using the new selection and grouping tools. Um, like I said, you know, you could, you could, uh, click the P button and grab a, um, a box or something and then lock those to where they're not affected. Uh, but yeah, if any of you have been playing around with the new updates, let me know. Oh, and this was a glitch. No, no, it wasn't. What happened here? Must have been after this. At some point, I ran into a glitch where I couldn't get any of the inventories to open, and it was very strange. Actually, I think it was right around here. Because I was lining this up, and then I couldn't get the get back in to turn it on. Like, you hear that little beep, that's me hitting the key for inventory and control panel and stuff, and it would not come up. I have no idea why. I even googled it and was on forums and stuff, and I hadn't heard anyone have the same problem. Um, but anyways, uh, for those of you that have played around with the update a bit more than I had, this is just me figuring out, or trying to figure out what's going wrong. Um, and there's a, some s coming up here shortly. There should be a transition where I try and fix it. There it is. So I had basically just backed all the way out, uh, closed the game completely, and then reloaded, and then it was fine. So I have no idea what that was about. Cause see now it'll open. Um, but yeah, for those of you that are aware or have played around with the update more than I have, um. <laughs> Do let me know if you know why I can't get the items to come out of this. Because um, basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try and set up a, a really simple uh, conveyor system since I had, you know, I put a chest next to it, um, then I tried to put a tube in the chest, and then I went to a full uh, connector, collector system type thing. Um, but what, what was doing this was I had had it set for use conveyor system and I thought maybe it was trying to eject parts but there was no conveyor so it was just deleting them or something. Um, I don't really know why it wasn't making any parts or components. Um, and, uh, and then of course I thought at some point uh, in, in a little bit here that maybe it was because um, that was a small ship and I had to do it on a large ship but, and so I tried to um, I tried to dismantle the uh, platform below us and that didn't even work so I don't I really am a little uh, perplexed to be honest as to why this is not yielding any any components like it's supposed to Um, yeah, I was turning the connector on to try and get rid of parts. You know, I suppose it could be from gravity. You know, the, it's it's getting rid of the parts before it gets in there, but they should be at least on the platform then, and they're not. Um, but yeah, as you can see, there's there's no parts anywhere, visible or or not. Well. If they were invisible, I suppose we wouldn't know about them, so there might be invisible parts. <laughs> don't mind, don't pay attention to me. Um, so this is where I attempted to basically go down and, and take out the, um, the platform and see if that, because that's considered a large ship or station, maybe that's what it is, maybe it's because it's a station that won't work either, I don't know. Um, but I had it on, I thought, because it's deleting stuff, but then it's just not giving me any parts. Um, and then I had this weird little gl uh, glitch, too, is that when I came back over here, I couldn't actually select the grinder. Almost like the inventory thing, only it wasn't giving me the option anymore for just the grinder. Um, and I couldn't access the panels or controls or anything, uh, anything even like that so I don't know if it's because it's too new and it's still just buggy and uh, and you know not 
basically doing what it should be doing, um, or if there's just something I'm doing wrong. Either of which is very possible. They only added it in last week, um, and I don't know everything about it, so either either case is very, very likely. Um, so yeah, uh, in the meantime, I hope you all enjoyed this episode. I know it's a little shorter, but there wasn't as much for me to talk about. Um, so I will leave you with that. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Peace!